Researchers found that in the first six months of 2015, 14 stores a day closed down on the UK High Street. However, charity shops, jewellers and coffee shops are growing at a fast rate. Cafes, independent or chain cafes, we all love a hot beverage. Having a coffee has never been so popular. But where does this coffee craze come from? In the year 1454, the first coffee house was established in Ethiopia, known as Kiva Canes, which was used as a religious meeting place. In the year 1650, the first coffee house opened in England near Oxford University so students could meet up. Thirteen years before this, a Greek student from Oxford University brewed the first cup of coffee in the England halls of residence. However, he was expelled for having too much coffee and not being able to concentrate during exams and tests. During the year of 1715, England had more than 2,000 coffee houses, therefore satisfying the busy tradesmen. In the year 1971, Jerry Baldwin, Zev Segal and Gordon Bokia discovered a new way of roasting coffee and then opened a store named Starbucks. Skipping forward to the present day, as a nation we consume 400 billion cups of coffee a year and this number is increasing. And today we are looking at the rise of the chain coffee shop. What makes them so popular? Have these chain coffee shops had an effect on the independent cafes? And are we fully aware what our obsession with coffee is doing to our health and our finance? And why, in a time of economic recession, are coffee houses thriving? I think the chain coffee stores, the Costas and the Starbucks, are surviving. They have a strong brand, and one of the advantages of strong branding is the ability to charge a premium price. And because they can charge a premium price, they can therefore be profitable. And for that reason, they, they can kind of infiltrate high streets in a way that independents find it much more difficult, really, to establish themselves. I do think that there's a, there's a big place for independent cafes, and probably in an increase in place for them because I think people know what they're getting with a brand. So, you, you know, if, it, if you wanted to play safe, if I, if I went to visit a new town, I went to Chester, for example, I've not been to for a, for a little while, I probably would seek out a Starbucks or a Cafe Nero uh, or a Costa because you know what, you, you know what you're going to get with, um, with one of their coffees. You know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it was, it was the fast food outlet, wasn't it? There was no... Burger King, there was no KFC, uh, I think McDonald's had kind of just started, but it was pretty much the only one. And, and then, you know, as, as time went on, we'd got these kind of, this corporate fast food restaurants everywhere, making food really disposable and cheap, and not that it's that cheap. And it's amazing that over the last 10 years, the coffee shops have, have done the same. Now it's a brand. It's, you don't go to a little independent tea shop. Many people don't go to little independent tea coffee shops, which, which they used to. You know, li little businesses started by local people, which, you know, they would take their profits from making coffee to the public and put it back into the community. You know, now it goes to, now any profits go to these big corporate organisations. I believe that we have been affected I've, by that. I feel we have, yeah. Yes. Yeah. In a positive way. Yeah. Hundred percent positive. Um, I mean, for us, we've got Costa. We've we've been open for less than a week. We've got Costa around the corner. A year ago, would you say, you talked yeah. to had a big coffee drinking culture? No, like a year ago, Costa was almost empty. Well, not empty, but and now they're full to the brim every single day. And well, obviously, we, we pick up that slack of they've got people interested in coffee. And now we can move in and, and take some of some of that. Yeah. I think because my customer aren't like really it's not really young people. Young people they tend to go like for a frappuccino in in Starbucks because they know it. Some people would come and try our, our like uh, milkshake and they go oh that's nice because for example they use chocolate powder we, we we use grated chocolate so it makes a massive difference on the taste we, we don't need to add any sugar when you drink our hot chocolate whereas when you go to there it has no taste so either you add syrup or you put sugar in it i think the, the way that industry kind of seems to be going is like cost of coming there'll always be room for brands and, and things like that they've they've made room for independence. I, I don't think they've made room for every independent. I think they've made room for certain independents. I, I think you've got to be as good and delivering as good, if not better, environment 
and product as, as the brand. Does that make them different in the sense that the quality of service we offer? When you come in here, you go sit and we bring your drink. We don't, we won't have you wait and say to you, oh, okay, the drink is ready, go and sit. I don't think it's nice. When you pay for a service, you have to, to have the service to the full. So I think that it's really important. And then you get to know your customers, you get to know their name, you get to know their stories, their life. But I think it's, I really enjoy it. We'll change our blends a lot. Like today, we were running um, uh, Malawi, which is single origin, triple certified, which is rainforest, fair trade and organic. Um, and then today we introduce an Ethiopian, which has got a little bit more of a wild flavour. Once you drink one, you'll always know an Ethiopian coffee. So we're running that and we're offering regulars that come in saying, oh, you had a Malawi yesterday, let's try this Ethiopian. And they come back and they give us feedback. Oh, I really like that one, actually. And then so we can guess, we can guess different roasters from around the country. We can guess coffee, different areas of the world. It's, it's great. You can't really do that as much in a chain as you can in an independent. Howard Schultz himself actually said that the UK coffee market is one of the most competitive markets in the world. So he, when you consider places like America, you think of Starbucks. When you think of the UK, you think of Starbucks, Costa, Nero, you know, there are a thousand other chains that you could go to. Um, but at Starbucks, I think we like to think of ourselves as the premium, the top of the brand. I think really the figures themselves would, would speak more volume than I would. So personally I think that that is the case. Not to say that independent coffee shops aren't incredibly important to the economy and to you know individual towns. I mean I know for example Stoke-on-Trent has a plethora of um, you know different coffee shops. I think the fantastic thing about independent coffee shops is they all offer their own independent take on what coffee is and what coffee should be. But I think that Starbucks, amongst its other competitors, 100%, you know, put forward the standard. And I think that, you know, that's why we are so popular. Um, because if, if we didn't produce good coffee, if we didn't produce a good beverage, or food, or pastries, or cakes, the first time, every time, then people wouldn't come back. When looking at the health research, one Starbucks peppermint white chocolate mocha is 560 calories. This is more than a Big Mac meal from McDonald's, which is only 508 calories. One large 16 ounce Starbucks latte with added sugar, cream and milk can have up to two tablespoons of sugar or even more. But, you know, they're, they're very clever also in the Starbucks and the Costa. I'm not sure which one of them does it, but I know one of them actually trains their staff to say, you know, you have to pass all the cakes and the biscuits before you get to the part of the counter where you actually order your coffee. So you have to look at all of that and possibly choose something from there as well. And actually when you get your coffee, they're, they're trained to say, would you like anything um, from the counter? So they are trained to try and entice you to buy some additional products while you're in there. During this documentary we have interviewed a range of people getting various opinions on the coffee culture in the UK. We have looked at the health implications of coffee and looked at the way independent cafes are struggling against chain coffee shop competitors. Throughout history coffee shops have always been a place of meeting and socialising but with the prices of coffee ever increasing and the chain coffee shops gaining popularity, will independent cafes become extinct? Will the coffee craze ever end? Thank you for watching The Coffee Craze.